Hello, my friends. And yesterday, Putin stated that they currently have no plans to capture Kharkiv. As for Kharkiv, there are no such plans at the moment. So thus, he confirmed that they lack the strength to take the seat. And additional, we see that the advance in the Kharkiv direction has slowed down. So the Russians have lost a lot of reserves and as confirmed by Russian war correspondents. Therefore, they are currently regrouping to continue their advance. And most likely, as stated by Sersky, they will try to reach the strong defensive line of the Ukrainian forces located near Bilikolodis, which is 15 kilometers from Vovchansk. But for now, we see that they are not having much success in Vovchansk. So they managed to reach the outskirts, but the Ukrainian forces are pushing them back. And the new threats attempting to break through are being destroyed. Uh, so the situation remains challenging, but but the Ukrainian forces are doing everything possible to maintain defense and it seems they are succeeding. And additionally, the occupiers continue to attack the village of Staritsa. So, but there have been no successes for three days now. Yes, they managed to advance three and a half kilometers from the border, but it seemed there were no fortification there. Therefore, they quickly took over this territory. But it has become harder for them to advance further. And today the front line remains unchanged here as well. Further west, attacks on Lipci are again being recorded, but the Russians haven't achieved any new successes. And here they also advanced with a large number of troops days ago, suffered many losses and now are advancing with limited groups, perhaps waiting for new reinforcements to try to break through again. And also today the topic of fortifications is being raised again. So footage of dragon's teeth in Sumy region has appeared online. So as seen, uh, they are also piled up in large quantities and are not fulfilling their function. Thus, uh, money was allocated for them, they were delivered to the site, but defensive lines were not established. And perhaps uh, this is again Russian disinformation, at least that's what the media write. Uh, but the administration of Bilapilla, where these teeth were found, quickly reacted and said that no one should spread this information information and this teeth will be installed when necessary. So currently on social media, the topic of terahedrons located in our community is being promoted from an unknown source. I officially want to say don't interfere in military affairs, don't dance to the enemy's tune, don't disclose or photograph the location of dragon's teeth. They will be installed precisely when and where planned in the city's defense plans. Please share this post as much as possible may of so what do you think about this so please share your thoughts in the comments and of course it's extremely unfortunate that we've lost territories and settlements uh, but on the other hand it will help the Ukrainian forces to eliminate more occupies. So think about it. Hitting Russian territory is not an option. And the occupies were not in large numbers in the, near the border. But now they've thrown 50,000 soldiers into the Kharkiv direction. And some of them have already crossed into Ukrainian territory. And now we can eliminate them without any restrictions directly on Ukrainian soil in the border zone. And this creates yet another platform for destroying Russian troops. So now the main thing is to have ammunition for artillery and drones for striking their forces. Uh, but because the Russians have practically unlimited ammunition and aerial bombs, strikes on Ukrainian territory continue unabated with hits even on Kharkiv. But we are waiting for Petrovots and maybe the situation will change soon. Meanwhile, Medvedev uh, has decided to share planes for the occupation of Ukrainian territory. And probably he and Putin haven't agreed because yesterday Putin stated that they currently have no plans to seize Kharkiv, but Medvedev is already planning to seize half of Ukraine. So it's not difficult to calculate that in case the Kyiv regime uses missiles like Storm Shadow, Scalp EG, with a range of at least 550 kilometers. And with the 
distance between Belgorod and Kiev at 429 kilometers, practically the entire central and significant part of the western territories of former Ukraine fall into such a buffer zone. In other words, Russia should be everywhere 550 kilometers plus another 70 or 100 kilometers for safety. Otherwise, the safety of our cities and villages cannot be enjoyed. Even if one imagines that some document is signed with Kiev or rather with Washington, any new Bandera lunatic with missiles is quite capable of violating it. The consequences are obvious. If this continues, the guaranteed buffer zone will be somewhere on the border with Poland or even in Poland itself. So, uh, but while Medvedev dreams of capturing big cities, in reality, uh, the battles are fought for small villages. So, however, everyone understands that the Russians continue to accumulate forces and increase military industry. And now uh, let's briefly look at the situation along the front line. So in the area of Kupiansk, the occupiers continue to assault Sankivka and also Ivanivka. Uh, so having carried out six airstrikes in the past days. So the activity here persists, but there have been no successes for the Russians and the front line remains unchanged. In the Svatovy area. Attacks are ongoing on Berestove and also Andreevka. So, but the activity is not at its highest and it seems they are launching attacks here uh, to restrain our forces since they don't have any major objective in this direction except access to the river. And similarly, in the direction of Krimina, so the occupiers are also attempting to reach the river and they continue their attacks uh, near the village of Terni. Uh, as before, but they are not achieving any success and the front line remains unchanged. And also, eight air strikes were conducted in the vicinity of Liman, so therefore the situation with Shalin remains tense. In the Siversk direction, so there were reported clashes in the area of Rehorivka. However, there have been no changes along the front line and all attacks near Vyimka and also Rozdolivka result in losses for the Russians. The situation remains unchanged here as well. In the Chasivyar direction, so as I mentioned earlier, the situation has stabilized. So despite all the Russian attacks, the front line has remained unchanged for a considerable period. And it appears that the Russians are doing everything they can, but the Ukrainian forces are managing to hold their defense and repel Russian attacks. Therefore, it seemed that the situation regarding the capture of Chasivyar by the Russians didn't go according to plan. In the direction of Pokrovsk, so the situation can also be described as stabilized for now. So the main battles are taking place around Novo Alexandrivka, and here the occupants urgently need to reach the highway. But the Ukrainian forces understand this as well. Therefore, they are maximizing the destruction of all advancing enemy vehicles and personnel. Thus, the Russians are unable to break through here. And additionally, fights are ongoing in the areas of Sokol and also Navalska. So, there have been no changes along the front line and the Russians conducted 25 assaults within the day. So, while the activity has somewhat decreased, uh, it's too early to draw conclusions. Perhaps the Russians are accumulating new reserves to initiate another wave of assaults. So, we'll have to wait and see how the events unfold. In the direction of Kurahova, so the occupiers continue to carry out airstrikes and attacks on Georgievka persist, and battles in the area of Paraskovievka and the village of Kostantinivka continue. So the Ukrainian forces are conducting counterattacks here as well, preventing any breakthroughs. Therefore, there have been no changes along the front line within the day. Uh, in the era of Vuhladar, so the battles for Staromayorsky continue unabated, but as before, the Russians have no success. Otherwise, the situation along the front line has stabilized. In the Zaporizhia direction, so there is 
a lull. So no new attacks are reported and the number of Shalon incidents has decreased. So it seems uh, safe to say uh, now that all of the Russians' plans to reclaim the liberated territory have failed. The changes along the front line during all the attacks amount to approximately one and a half kilometers. And that's where all their success end. And Russian correspondents have started complaining about a shortage of ammunition and life forces here. So in the Zaporizhia direction, today our forces didn't storm the enemy in the settlement of Robotina. However, with the help of artillery, we dismantled one enemy position. Although overall in, uh, in the Dnipro operational command, there is a problem with ammunition for artillery, as well as a clear advantage of the Ukrainians in all types of drones and electronic warfare equipment. We've also mentioned the shortage of personnel in the land border service more than once. So far, the commander of the Dnipro operational command, General Toplinsky, cannot fight according to the principles of Generalissimo Suvorov to defeat the enemy not by numbers but by skill. Our Toplinsky is strong in fighting by numbers, but he lacks the talent of the strategist. So overall, General Toplinsky is doing everything right and decimating the Russian army. So in the direction of Kherson. So the occupies uh, also can't dislodge the Ukrainian forces from the left bank and several attacks per day as before are carried out on the village of Krynke. But the Ukrainian forces repel all attacks and the front line remains unchanged. And Russian correspondents today began to claim that they conducted 10 assaults on the village of Krynke, so in the direction of Kherson. Today, then, uh, there were more than 10 assaults on the settlement Krynke. Assault groups, as usual, were from the 328th and 337th motorized rifle divisions. Without success, the enemy maintains superiority in drones and artillery. Additionally, the Marines of the 61st Marine Brigade attempted to repel islands in the delta of the Dnipro River using new means of water transport. For crossing the water obstacle, they use hydrocycles, which practically fly over underwater mines without detonating them. Unfortunately, the enemy identifies the landing spot of our main landing force on boats and then impedes their movement. So overall, the struggle continues and success lies with the Ukrainian forces. And by the way, uh, guys, so now uh, uh, what do you think uh, about the idea um, of a section where we could interact in real time on uh, geopolitical topics? So something like podcasts or maybe an interview, I don't know exactly, please, uh, what do you think about this idea? So write your thoughts in general. <laughs> uh, and that's all from me. So please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and of course hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.